Hello and welcome to the 12th installment of our War and Peace Quarantine Edition 50 Pages a Day Read Through. I am Matthew Robinson and my hair is ridiculous, but Dimitri's hair is beautiful and quaffed. Welcome, Dimitri Portnoy. Welcome, Matt. Welcome, everybody. Of the two people unable to get haircuts right now, I am definitely suffering more than you. Uh, yes, I, I have thick hair that kind of gets bushy, gives me a, a jufro. Yeah. Your hair gives you a, a basically strider-like, uh, mm. elf-like appearance. Let's be honest, I look more like worm tongue. But thank you very much. <laughs> Shall we discuss pages uh, 550 to 600? Congratulations, you have made it halfway through War and Peace. You have read War. Now you only have peace left to read. Uh, this is a climax of the book. Uh, it sure these are is. The scenes, these are the scenes that everybody thinks about uh, when thinking about the book. Uh, these are the 50 pages that were adopted into Natasha Pierre and the Comet of 1812. An amazing, be beautiful musical. Oh, wow. Uh, and what was interesting about that musical is that instead of writing original lyrics, uh, all the composer and lyricist did uh, was cut up Tolstoy's prose uh, and set it to music and oh, put no it. When was that? As when was that done? Uh, this was done. Uh, I saw it on Broadway two years ago. Uh, it was actually premiered off Broadway. Oh, it's a, rec uh, a recent musical. It's very recent oh, and it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, it just lost out to something for uh, a Tony for best musical. It didn't do incredibly well on Broadway. Mm. It closed after about. 400 performances it was also uh, a race blind casting hmm. uh the original uh hamilton love interest um played natasha gotcha uh, in, in the first uh in the first iteration yeah 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 uh, and of the show and, and the composer and singer and songwriter who created the show played pierre um uh, my wow. mother my mother reminded me that uh, in the Russian eight-hour epic War and Peace, Bondarchuk, the director, played Pierre. Oh, funny. I need to watch that. When this is all over, I've never seen that before. I'm definitely going to try to get my hands on that. Um, all right, let's talk about what happened in these 50 pages. So uh, the first thing is that it's confusing that there are two people named Maria, uh, one of whom is a minor character we meet in the first very beginning of the book. Uh, who is, um, I don't know, like just like the the woman who runs the Rostov's house, I guess? Uh, she's, are you talking about the countess? Yeah, Maria Drubitsky. The Rostov's are visiting her. Okay, that, uh, right, right. She's actually... Right. That's who they're staying I, I think with in Moscow. Figure. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, if you remember, in one of the very first scenes, uh, she gives Natasha a pair of ruby earrings. Yeah, 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 that's right. Before chastising Pierre right. uh, for, for, for embarrassing himself with that uh, bear and policeman incident. Right. Well, it's funny because... Uh, she. Go ahead. Uh, she is a a big, thick woman with a very loud voice. Yeah. She's incredibly opinionated. Yeah. Uh, although, unlike uh, Andre's dad, uh, she's actually maternal and, and very kind-hearted, uh, although people often find her off-putting yeah, because well, she brooks no quarter. She kicks some ass this 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 section, this episode. Um, she yeah, does? This 50 pages here is almost, it, it is really like a little movie. Um in and of itself, because so much action happens. These pages fly. It's almost all dialogue. Um, Natasha uh, has waited long enough for her Prince Andre. She's growing restless. When will he come? She is taken by uh, by the uh, the head of the Rostov family. Or no, sorry. The yeah, that's right. Uh, her father takes yes, her the cow. and yeah. Sonia to uh, to the opera, and we get a very funny scene. Uh, where she finds the outpouring of emotion embarrassing in the actors and then goes on to create an opera of her own, uh, which embarrasses all of us. Um, yes, in the box of Helen, uh, Pierre's wife, and of course her wayward, extremely handsome, irresistible brother, 
Anatoly. Yes. And so Anatoly makes eyes at her and decides that she will be his uh, his next conquest. And she is easy prey because he is handsome and giving her attention. And she is lonely and not sure where her fiance is. And uh, she falls in love with him. And her and she just had the disastrous meeting with her uh, father-in-law and yeah, her sister-in-law. They all, nobody wants her in the family. Rejected they her. rejected her. So she was primed to be stolen away. And we get a great moment of Ellen, who is Pierre's estranged wife, uh, kind of uh, greasing the wheels here a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> she is. Out of her brother. She is a deceitful little villainess. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so Natasha gets fully involved in him and decides that she is going to elope with him and say no to the to Pierre. And she writes Pierre, uh, sorry, to uh, Prince Andre. And she writes Prince Andre's sister a letter saying that the engagement is off. And and then Anatole and his uh his equally villainous friend uh, who we've already seen Pierre duel with and, and defeat. They plan Dolokhov. Dolokhov. They plan how they're going to steal away in the night and they have this whole plan and there's a priest waiting in the woods and he's going to marry them and they're going to run defrocked off. A defrocked priest. A defrocked priest, yes. And he's going to steal her away in the middle of the night and wrap her in a fur mink coat and steal her away and marry her and never come back again. But when he arrives... Maria is waiting for him and she tries to chase him down because this is actually illegal what he's doing. This is, this is, you can go to jail for this or at least be. But he's transporting a minor yeah. across con- country lines. And across so the border. she chases him off. But it's he, a kidnapping. But he escapes and uh, Natasha is furious. She burns all the bridges with everyone around her. This is my true love. How dare you? And then Pierre shows up, the voice of reason. And lets her know the truth, which is that Anatole doesn't love her. He doesn't really care. It was all just fun and games for He's him. He's married. He's even married. Uh, he lost so badly at gambling that he had to marry a rich farmer's daughter in order to appease the debt. And then he ended up just... Uh, ditching her and paying off the father. So he already has one woman he's married that he didn't want to marry who he abandoned. And now he's trying to marry another. uh, And so Pierre breaks all this news to her and Natasha, much like uh, many of our characters so far becomes an adult in this moment through devastating disillusionment. And we now Natasha has left childhood and at the end, she is much like Pierre or much like Prince Andre, uh, or much, much like Nikolai throughout. He is confused. She is confused and lost. And she has left the safety of childhood and realized that she, her actions have consequences and devastating consequences potentially for herself and those around her. Uh, her engagement with Prince Andre is called off. Prince Andre, no one will ever hurt me. He pretends that's fine. I gave her an out. I I even expected this, he says, but clearly he's hurt, but he'll never let it show. And he's now focused back on the war. Uh, And this is Tolstoy's way of letting us know that we should also potentially become more focused back on the war because it is happening. uh, Sekharov, who was sort of the Dick Cheney of Russia, has been uh, accused of being a French spy and has been driven off as... uh, All attention turns back on Napoleon, who uh, is once again a villain in the eyes of the Russians, and we might be going back to war. And it all ends in this beautiful climax of the historically accurate Comet of 1812 flying overhead as Pierre looks at it and thinks to himself, everybody sees this Comet as heralding of the end of the world, but I think it just might be a blossoming of a new life for myself. And and what caused him to blossom is a moment of love and generosity that he shows Natasha. Yeah. Uh, In the meeting just before she breaks down, she says, my life is over. There's no way I can overcome the embarrassment to me and the embarrassment to my family that just happened. Uh, She doesn't blame Anatoly. Yeah. Uh, She blames herself. Yeah. She's an adult. Uh, She's taking responsibility. And in a moment of pure kind heartedness and generosity, Pierre said, uh, if I were a better man, I would marry you. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, 
and, and he did and love you, her once. Your life is just beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So, and with that, we head into um, act three or book three, however you want to call it. Um, and the halfway mark of the book, there are six acts or six books. We are in the third. Um, I think there are four. Oh, there are four books. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, right, right. So we're halfway. Yeah, yeah. We're halfway. Yeah, yeah. My bad. My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Four, not six. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Exciting stuff. You've read half of War and Peace, Dimitri. What do you think so far? Give it your halfway through review. Uh, uh, It... it in the best possible way, this novel could have been 10 times as long. Uh, he shows you the choicest parts uh, and, and everything. This is a novel written in sentences rather than paragraphs or mm. chapters mm-hmm. uh, where, where major developments and major psychological changes, uh, major moral choices happen so fast uh, that you would miss them if they weren't presented to you with such clarity. And and, uh, this, uh, what's interesting to me structurally is that this volume is very different from the first. Uh, In the first volume, you had a very smooth ride with gently escalating action. In this volume, you had a very powerful, dramatic opening 50 pages then a lot of turbulence and chaos, and then an even more powerful, even more climactic uh, closing 50 yeah. pages. Yeah, You had Natasha come in, uh, and for me, the most powerful sentence so far in the book uh, is when Natasha is compared. Uh, Tolstoy actually says Natasha looks uh, like a, a wild animal cornered mm-hmm. by hunters mm-hmm. and dogs. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, this section has a big hunt in it. Yeah. Uh, and, and a very protracted one where Natasha screams with excitement. Yeah. And, and here she's on the other side. Now she's the uh, and, and I think, yeah, hunted. this is all planned. Yeah. You know, the the reason the hunt was described in such detail earlier is because of this single sentence yeah. that, that, that that's going to totally destroy the reader. Remember, she uh, said she, she said during moment. that hunt that it was the, the 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 peak of her life, the greatest moment of her life when they were riding home from that hunt and said she couldn't imagine ever being more happy than she was at that one moment. And then, of course, like, yeah, never say that. Yeah, never, ever, yeah, ever, ever a, say that. She, she, what if it's she true, brought it upon it's herself. A... Um, you've read more books than most people have seen. Dimitri, are you enjoying this experience reading this book? Uh, yes. Uh, my fear was that uh, uh, it would be so familiar mm-hmm. uh, th- th- that I wouldn't get much out of it. It's like learning uh, to play like, Happy like, Birthday on the Piano. Uh, sure, or in some ways, watching Gone with the Wind. Yeah, it's all, <laughs> Where, it's all archetype. You, you know. yeah. yeah, but it's so weird. This is such a strange and weird book. Mm. Um, and it's filled with uh, like moments of human truth. Uh, th- that uh, uh, the imitations, uh, and it's a, a source of great literature and the source of great movies uh normalize it Mm. (laughs) you you know and 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 the source itself um is extremely odd in 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 the in the best possible way very peculiar uh i don't think you can get this from any of its successors yeah yeah sure uh uh you, you know that that kind of smooth out the roughness um, and, and also, uh, don't let everything hang out mm-hmm. the way this novel does, uh, but also don't have the precision and acuity of this sentence and no other can really express yeah. this feeling, this sentiment, this political thought. Yeah. Well, we have made it halfway through. Congratulations. You, you, we are halfway through the book that is the number one book if if we were doing family feud and they said name a long book the definitely the number one <laughs> chosen book would be war and peace 
that would be uh, number one with a bullet. You'd, get, you'd ding number one on that. So we are halfway through. We begin our downhill uh, uh, descent tomorrow. Uh, no spoilers, but Dumbledore does die at the end of the book. And uh, I hope uh, I hope you're Dumbledore all with us. Dumbledore dies at the end of every book. Dumbledore dies at the end of every book. Um, we are still healthy, Dimitri. We are halfway through the book. We have no idea if we are halfway through our quarantine. Doesn't look like it. Maybe we'll be able to read War and Peace again. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if you're with us, stay with us and stay healthy and stay indoors and keep reading. What a great idea this is. Now, Thank you, Dimitri. Again, I, 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 I cannot. I, 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 again, this is the second gift you've given me that is priceless. Oh, the, was first the first was a Kindle. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that did change your I, life. I can't say that I'm reading this book on the Kindle you gave me. Yeah. Uh, there have been Kindles in between. Yes. Uh, but the fact that I could read this book while I'm walking my dogs at night. Mm. What a time to be alive. Yes. All right, D. We'll see you all tomorrow. Farewell. See you Bye -bye. tomorrow, Matt.